So earlier this year, Kodak announced that they were re-releasing Kodak Gold in medium format 120 film version. It rattled the film community, everyone was all excited, a few big shots got to test the film first. Kodak Gold in 120. Kodak Gold in 120. Kodak Gold in 120. It's Kodak release Gold in 120 format. And I've already seen a lot of folks producing really cool images with the film. But since I'm just a peasant low-tier film photography enthusiast here in YouTube, I had to wait for the April release of the film until I could get my hands on it. And I did. I got 10 rolls as soon as they were up for grabs. And I would like to show some of the first photos that I made with this film, as well as some commentary in the end, so if you're interested in that, then please stick around. By the way, I'm Bon, and if you're new here, welcome to my little space online where I share my visual art shenanigans stuff, mostly film photography. Um, and if you're a returning subscriber, thank you very much. Um, I really appreciate it that you want to keep looking at whatever this is. <laughs> um, anyways, let's go back to talking about Kodak Gold before I go further away from the topic. Kodak Gold is one of Kodak's consumer films. In other words, it's supposed to be their more affordable offering compared to their more expensive professional line like Kodak Portra. As such, it is more of a generalist type of film that could work for all sorts of situations. According to Kodak Alaris, Kodak Gold 200 film is a low-speed color negative film that offers an outstanding combination of color saturation, fine grain, and high sharpness. It is designed for general picture-taking situations in daylight or electronic flash. To my eyes, Kodak Gold is punchy and can be quite saturated when shot at box speed. Plus, it has this noticeable golden warmth to its color palette, which is frankly iconic. It's very reminiscent of my 90s film photos. However, I never really thought of Kodak Gold as my go-to film. I admit that in the past, I tended to snob it as that one cheap film that Walmart still sold while I was buying Lomography Color Negatives, Fuji Pros, and Kodak Portraits. I think I was just not that fond of the warmth that could be overpowering sometimes. Although as more and more films get axed, looking at you Fuji, I started to appreciate the existence of all film stocks and have shot more Kodak Gold. Kodak Gold in 120 medium format film was discontinued back in 1997, so it was definitely heralded as a win by the film community when Kodak announced that they are releasing it again in 2022. I must say that this move is quite comforting because Kodak just increased their prices this year yet again, making film photography a tad more expensive to pursue as a hobby. But it's a good reminder that Kodak is committed to keeping film alive and that some of the money that we're spending on them is actually being used for research and development of film, both old and new. It's quite reassuring. Anyways, I had planned on going to New Orleans for a conference at the beginning of May where I thought I'd burn through my 120 Kodak Gold films. However, as you might have seen from my last video, that didn't happen because I got sick. So instead, I decided to use some of my films while the cherry blossoms were in full bloom here in Toronto. The first time I shot Kodak Gold in 120, I used my Key of 60 camera with my Volna 3 80mm f2.8 lens. I met with a friend to see some cherry blossoms at the University of Toronto downtown campus. The weather that day was a bit overcast though, and it was late afternoon so the lighting isn't that great. But I guess that just meant I got to test this film in boring overcast lighting situation. These first few photos show that even in overcast drab lighting situations, you can still get good saturated colors from this film. The shadows show more green tones but they're not muddy and can easily be neutralized in Lightroom. This is also the first time I used my KF60, and man, I love the character of the Volna 3 lens. It reminds me of the Helios 44-2 lens, but in medium format. A 
As Coda claims, Kodak Gold really does have some fine grain, which is great for resolving details and sharpness while keeping the bokeh quality butter smooth. The greens also really pop in this film. I love it. Here, I asked my friend if she could pose for me under this cherry tree. The flat lighting is great for portraits, although I wish I asked her to take off her glasses because it's casting some shadows on her face. Also, the branches act like great leading lines, but maybe I should have positioned her better so the branches don't look like they're growing from her head. Overall, I quite like the photo though. Next, I saw these tulips while walking around the area and decided to take a photo of them. I really like the contrast of the red from the green. I think Kodak Gold's punchiness really works here. I love those bright warm reds. Yellows are of course amazing in this film too. In the future, I would like to compare this to Actor 100 because that film is also very saturated but with a more neutral tone than warm. Here's a few more examples showing how the greens look amazing in this film. The next few days, I went to see the cherry blossoms at High Park, which is the largest public park in Toronto. There are several places here to see the cherry blossoms, with the most impressive one being Cherry Blossom Hill or Cherry Hill. I brought my Fuji GW690 version 2 this time, thinking I'd take photos of the scenes. The Fuji GW690 version 2 takes 6x9 medium format photos, so you can really get some high resolution photos with this camera. And I would say that Kodak Gold 120 handles that pretty well. Here, I really like how the light reflected on the river is speaking between two cherry blossom trees. Although I really wish I had a wider lens on medium format so I could have taken in more of the scene. I also brought my Contax S2 to take photos with Kodak Gold in 35mm. I had fun taking photos overall but it was too busy for my liking and I think the camera's lens isn't wide enough to truly capture the vibe of the park. So I also asked some interesting strangers if they'd be okay with me taking their photos. Here are some portraits I took using the Fuji GW690 Mark II. I think Kodak Gold's warmth really shines during golden hour. I mean, look at the contrast between the warm skin tones and the cool greens and blues in this photo. Here's how the film looks like when shot backlit. I think it works. The saturation of the film drops to a more pastel tone when overexposed. Though I think I should have overexposed this photo a bit more. Like these ones that I took with my Contax S2 loaded with Kodak Gold and 35mm. The film handles overexposure pretty well, maybe around 2 to 3 stops, so then it starts to fall apart a bit. But yeah, um, I really think that Kodak Gold was made for Golden Hour. Anyway, I thought I'd compare Kodak Gold in medium format versus 35mm, but I didn't want to take the exact same photos, <laughs> so instead here are some passing thoughts. I think they both have the signature warm tones of Kodak Gold, only the medium format version has more latitude and resolves details better. Pretty standard with medium format film. For me, the 35mm version is just a tad punchier than the 120 version. Now that could be caused by many factors like the lens I was using, the way I metered and exposed the film, to the development, scanning, and editing. But I don't know, the 35mm version just looks more saturated in my eyes. Here are some more portraits of awesome strangers I took using my Contax S2. If you happen to be one of these people, thank you so much for letting me take your photos. Also I hope that wasn't too awkward. <laughs> Just for the heck of it, I also shot a roll of Fujifilm Pro 400H using my GW690. As you can see in here, Kodak Gold is more saturated compared to Pro 400H right off the scans. Now, Fuji Pro 400H is really good for scanning and editing, so you can definitely make these photos more saturated in post, 
but I actually just like these photos with minimal color editing for that neutral pastel look. And this isn't meant to be like a really scientific comparison between Kodak Gold and Pro 400H. They're very different film stocks. But yeah, I thought maybe it'll make sense just to show you what you can get from these different film stocks. I really like my experience using Kodak Gold in 120 and I think I will keep a few rolls of it in my film fridge. The only real drawback with this film is that it has an ISO of 200 which makes it difficult to shoot in low light situations without a tripod. But I really like it that Kodak is adding more options to our film cravings. Anyways, that's it for this video. Thank you very much for watching and I hope you liked it. If you did, please go ahead and give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more if you haven't. I'll see you all in the next one. Cheers.